The terms framework and library are two terms that are used a lot in the tech industry. Many people use them interchangeably and don't really understand what they mean. So if you're on that boat, hopefully this video will help you out. So let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to cover what is a library, what exactly is a framework, and then we're going to compare both of them and see what the actual difference is. So what exactly is a library? Well, in a gist, a library is a set of code that was previously written that can be called upon when building your own code. So it's essentially a collection of code packed together that can be used over and over again. And it's a very good idea to put frequently used functions together and build yourself a library. One of those reasons is handling reusability. So reusability is one of the most important factors in software development. So whenever some method is used, you can simply make a method invocation using the library you just imported. So we can look at an example of how we import libraries in JavaScript right over here. We're importing three different libraries, one called Promise, Body Parser, and Lodash. And from there, we can simply make calls to those libraries when they're actually needed. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example where we actually use a library. Now, let's say you're building an application where you need to register and sign up a bunch of users. In order to do that, the users must actually submit a valid email address when signing up. Now, there are many ways to do this, but most of the ways will actually involve using regular expressions. So I actually wrote a function that validates email earlier. So we're gonna write a function called validate email that will take a parameter called email. And from there, we're gonna write our regular expression. And you can see it's quite lengthy and tedious and it's hard to understand. If you're not familiar with regular expressions, they basically match a string with specific characters. And this is basically a pattern that actually looks for the specific email that matches the pattern. So near the end of the function, we're actually gonna return a Boolean that will check whether the email has passed a red regular expression test. And it will tell us whether the email was false, which, was, uh, in, which means invalid, or true, which means that it was valid. So let's actually go ahead and test this out before we start. Uh, let's go ahead and validate uh, an email that has the wrong characters. So I'll pass in a string that simply says name.com. Save that, and then we're gonna run the validator. And you can see that's false. I put a little quote there accidentally. I'll run that again. And you can see that's false. So if I type in an at gmail.com and save that, that should return true. So the regular expression is essentially looking that there's characters, then it's split by an at sign, and it has another domain name here, followed by a period, and then another three string character or a specific number of characters here. Now, although this works totally fine and it's acceptable code, there's nothing wrong with it. There's a faster way to do this uh, by using a library called Email Validator. Now, Email Validator essentially has this uh, function kind of similar to this, but it goes in a lot more depth as to what are valid emails or not. Here, it's probably not testing all the cases uh, for specific emails, but the specific library, Email Validator, can check for a bunch of different emails with different domain names, different lengths, different symbols, and many other ways of writing an email. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this down and import that library, and you'll see how much more succinct and condensed our code looks, our code looks using this library. So I'll import the library at the top here, and I'm gonna call it validator, and we're gonna require it into this file. Now the library name is called email validator. And now what we do, now that we have validator, the library itself, we can uh, call a lot of their methods that are actually written in that library uh, using a period. So we can simply type in, I'll console lock this as well, validator.validate, and then here we type in the name, uh, the email that we wanna check. So I'll do the same one that we did earlier. And I'm actually gonna comment this out so we, know we don't get confused here. I'm gonna save this and I'll clear this console out again. And we can see that it's actually true. So let's uh, let's remove the at sign to make sure that it's invalid. And we see now we get a false. So you can see now how a lot more condensed uh, our validator is. Simply importing the library allows us to reuse this kind of function into this file and really condense it and make it really readable and easy to, to use. So let's say we have this validator when signing up a user, but we also want to validate users when logging in. So we can simply import this library on the login page and do the exact same thing we've done here instead of actually running a long, tedious function using regular expressions like the one below. So we can actually save ourselves time by reusing this handy function from the library instead of writing this function over and over again in different files. 
Now, in theory, you could actually write this function in a utilities file of your own project and save it there and import it in other files. But you're essentially running a library on your own. And since there's already a uh, library for email validation, you might as well just use the one that's available. Now let's take a look at what is a framework. In a gist, a framework is a supporting structure where your own code defines the meat of the operations by filling out the structure. It essentially provides a scaffold on which to build software and allows a programmer to avoid writing any boilerplate code and merely fill in the blanks, leaving the framework to decide when it's appropriate to execute any business logic. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of how we would use a framework. We're going to be working with one called Express. Now, Express is a framework that provides a robust set of features for web and mobile applications. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth as to what Express is and how it works, since this isn't really a tutorial on it. But I do have some boilerplate code here where I'm actually importing the framework at the top. I'm making an instance of the application itself and sending it to a variable called app. And I have a variable called port set to the number 3000, which we're going to be using in a second. Now, when using Express and similar to other frameworks, uh, it's structured in a specific way where it's going to be looking for specific method calls and specific parameters. So when you're actually using Express and frameworks, you have to be able to name them the methods correctly. You can just name them whatever you want. So let's say we want to make an actual get request on our root path. And we already have an actual Express server instantiated and stored in our variable called app. Now, app will have a bunch of methods that is expecting, and one of them is actually .get. So .get is basically saying that when it gets to that route, it should give the response that is specified in the function. And it will take two arguments. The first one will be the URL, which will be our root path, which is simply a forward slash. And then it will take a callback function that tells Express what to send back to the person making the request. Now that callback function will take in two parameters as well, request and response. And these are essentially objects that um, Express knows how to handle and manage. And it's essentially going to be looking for them when this route is hit. So what we want to do is simply send a message to the route. And let's just send back something that says hello from Code Academy. Just like our app instantiation. Our response object has also a bunch of uh, functions and methods that is, uh, are available, and we can invoke them whenever we want. So before we actually uh, run this, we actually have to instantiate our server as well. And we can do this by simply calling .listen and passing in our port. I'm going to close that. I'm going to restart my server here. And then we could simply, let me save this, and then let's go ahead and run our uh, server. So I have a new tab open and I have set up my port on 3000 so we can go directly to our local host 3000 and uh, whatever we have sent through the dot send method call, the string that we passed in there in the response object should display to the client here. So let's go ahead and go to our local host 3000 and you can see that the string that we passed into that function call is uh, sent back to the, to the user, to the client. So that's what was written right over here. So it's okay if you don't completely understand what the code means in here. Like I said, this isn't really an express tutorial, but what I do want you to get out of this is mostly how we're actually working with a framework as opposed to a library where we simply import it and call a method or a different method with different parameters. In this case, there's a specific structure that we have to follow. So if we're making a GET request or a POST request, it's going to be expecting two parameters at least, one of them being the route and the other one being a callback function. So if one is missing or uh, the certain pattern here is like not a string, it's going to give you errors. So you have to follow the pattern, the structure that the framework provides. So in this case, we're more of filling in the functions themselves instead of making uh, simply method invocations like we're doing with the library. In this case, the framework is calling on your code. You're not calling on the framework's code. So let's take a look at an analogy in order to drive this home. Let's pretend you're a construction worker and you're assigned to build a house. Now, in theory, you could build a house without using any tools, but if you want to make your life easier, you'd go ahead and use a hammer, use a nail gun, use a handsaw, whatever you need. So in a sense, all these tools are your library. You're going to be using these tools to build a house, and not only can you build a house with them, you can all go ahead and build a table, a chair, anything you like with these tools. Now, if you look at a framework, 
Well, the supporting structure is going to be the framework itself. So the framework dictates how your project will be structured, whereas libraries are more of the building blocks that can be used anywhere. So the skeleton or foundation of the house is essentially your framework. You're going to be adding to it, and you're going to fill out the structure until it's completed and it comes together. Now, one key point to note here is that a framework may use libraries, but it doesn't really need libraries in order to operate. So now we have an idea of what a framework and a library is, but one of the biggest factors that differentiate a library and a framework is something called inversion control. When we use frameworks and libraries, our code flow is a little bit different. So let's say you have your own code written and you import a library. When you import a library, you have access to all these methods that are collected pieces of functionality from that library. So you're making calls directly to the library itself. So when we use a library, we are in charge of the flow of the application. We are the ones choosing when and where to call the library. On the other hand, when we use a framework, the framework itself is making calls towards our code. So the framework writer writes the application and leaves out the interesting details which we fill in. So when using a framework, the framework is in charge of the flow. It provides some places for you to plug in your code, but it calls a code you plugged in as needed. Now, a lot of frameworks can get quite hefty and large, like Rails, for example. So for that reason, many frameworks actually end up even using libraries. But it's important to note, like I said in the previous slide, it's not a necessity for a framework to contain libraries. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some actual popular frameworks and libraries that are used around. Uh, one of the main most popular frameworks, which I just mentioned, is Rails, which is a very popular beginner-friendly framework that uh, uses Ruby and makes it very easy to get started and set up a basic skeleton. If you worked a lot with front-end development, then you're probably familiar with Angular, which is a front-end framework that specializes in building uh, rich single-page applications. There's also Django, which is a framework that uses Python for web development, and it's used uh, by some of the big names such as Google, YouTube, and Instagram. And we also have Express, which is a back-end development framework that prides itself in being very minimal and fast. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the libraries now. One of the most popular libraries which you've probably heard of is React, and React is a JavaScript library by Facebook that's used for building user interfaces and single page applications. There's also jQuery, which is a very old school library designed to help in manipulating HTML elements, as well as event handling and CSS animation. Another library called Lodash is essentially a productivity kit that provides a bunch of utility functions that you can use in your program right off the bat. And lastly, we have Redux, which is another open source JavaScript library for managing application state, and it's commonly used with React. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of what is a framework and a library and how they're actually different. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or dropping a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning on Codecademy today.